Okay, hi everyone. Um, some of you know me already. I'm Daniele uh, Procida. I was in the fellowship group of 2021, actually. No, um, so been was it 20? I, I'm honest, COVID has messed up my counting of things like months and years. So I, I really have trouble with this nowadays. Not not because of the effects of symptoms, but just because of the way it's messed up time generally. Anyway, um, yes, yeah, so I've been asked to give a little update. Let me. Uh, briefly introduce myself. So um, I'm not in research, unlike most of you. I'm uh, in industry. I'm a director of engineering at Canonical, the company that you might know being behind um, the Ubuntu operating system, um, for example. Um, I've got a long standing interest in software documentation, and that's what my fellowship is about. So um that's what i look like on television uh you can ever since elon musk made twitter great again uh you can find me on mastodon instead um i'm interested in rigor in software documentation in software documentation as a discipline because in the rest of the business of software engineering all kinds of things are treated not as sciences but as crafts with a history uh, methodologies, paradigms, and so on, and documentation has lacked these, and it's um, that's what my work at Canonical and elsewhere is about changing. So I'm the Canonical's practice lead for documentation, and my mission is to set the standards of excellence for software documentation for the entire industry. So, and and that kind of ties into the SSI and the fellowship and so on. So um, if I'm known for anything, it's the Diataxis documentation framework. There's a, a link there, diataxis.fr. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about um, uh, that. Of course, it, it is came out of needs of software product documentation, but I'm finding it being adopted and adapted to other things. So for example, just the other day, somebody got in touch to say, that he had adapted it to a note-taking system because it's based on a study of needs in the exercise of a craft or skill. And I think that any use of software, of a programming language, of a product, conducting your business, whatever it is, it could be anything from making software, doing color, color, colorimetric analyses or baking bread or flying a plane they're all domains of skill and I think they are, can all be I think a general analysis of needs of the practitioner apply in all of those and that we can try to address those in documentation so there's this kind of rigor uh, in it and I think the analysis is proving to apply very generally which is very interesting for me to see how it can be extended or adapted to things that were beyond my initial field um, of, of need. So I've been interested in how this applies to science and research, where reproducibility is a key concern. And I believe that one of the difficulties that I've seen and have has been expressed to me in research is that um, Software is often not as reproducible as it should be, nor are data, and neither is the research that it's supposed to be supporting. And documentation can play a part in this because I know from my work that one of the keys to the success of software and its use, its adoption, its sustainability is in fact um, the documentation. So, um, oh yes, I'm, I'm calling to you from Leiden in the Netherlands, but I also live in Cardiff, UK. Um, that's the framework. Uh, please, by all means, um, have a look. And I'm always happy to chat about it with people and find out if it's been useful to them or, or not, indeed. Um, in March last year, I held four, four sessions, actually, not three. Was I, before that, I, I had kind of um, uh, a, a needs-defining session. I, I had a call and worked with some people to find out where they felt their problems lay in this question of documentation. And then the three sessions that uh, uh, I ran were on um, 
quality and ways of doing docu um, sorry uh, what documentation in software ought to look like to be successful execution ways of actually working when you're doing it day by day step by step that are effective and uh, the tooling and for these three workshops people came to all of them we had about 30 attendees from various uh, research contexts takeaways were I mean first of all Definitely, I am so sick of doing online workshops and online talks. They can work, but they are always second best. They're not the experience that I want, and they are reduced experiences compared to what's possible in, in person. So I, I, I want, really want to get away from those now that we, we can, I think. I think there was genuine value from the attendees. I collected some uh, feedback after each session. Um, I've got ideas now about things I could do a little bit differently and a little bit better understanding of what the concrete problems that uh, people in research have. Um, and the biggest problem that I actually see, the biggest takeaway for me, is that this problem is much bigger than anything I can address at a kind of ground level. It's that there simply is a lack of systematic attention to this question of documentation, I mean software documentation in research. Everybody who was there at the sessions, for example, was there under their individual initiative. So I could give, even if I gave workshops all day long, every day, every week, I'm still not sure how much impact that would have in the scale of things, because I think the problem is systematic in research and perhaps not amenable just to somebody doing a few workshops. So that's really, a, that's really a, uh, a question for me. This is what I think a documentation workshop should look like, by the way. This is, uh, I, did what, I did this at uh, the recent Ubuntu Summit and uh, quite a different experience. Was anybody here at any of my workshops? No, I don't. So, that is what I would like to try and do uh, more of. So one question I've come away with is simply in research, what are the prospects? You know, is this even possible to attain some kind of system understanding of software documentation and for some kind of coherent approach to its practice to become the norm in research? And I'd be really interested to hear what people think about that. I'm slightly less optimistic about that than I was when I when I started. Um, some things I've got coming up next. I'll be at PyCon Namibia, where I go every year. I've been there many, uh, several years in a row now. Uh, I'll give a, a workshop on documentation practices and principles at this conference. Very glad that the SSI is able to support that through my uh, fellowship. Um, we find we meet a lot of, um, I think it's correct to call them naive programmers at events like PyCon Namibia. That is people who are in software, but haven't come through an engineering background. They're people who have picked up programming to solve their problems. They might be data scientists, they might be people working in industry or government, and often they're doing really Im imaginative uh, things and, and they're solving real problems, but they don't have this, um, they don't have the software engineering background that is one of the guarantees of rigor in software practice. So it's an opportunity to introduce some key principles very early on for um, people. Um, I, well, actually, it's one of my colleagues who is interested in the same ideas that I have, has um, proposed um, or has been collaborating with somebody at Humboldt University in Berlin uh, in the condensed matter physics group. I don't know what they do exactly, but uh, they're very scientific and um, we might do a workshop there. She's actually leading it, going to be leading it, which is, is, is very nice. Um, and I'm looking for more opportunities like that. In the UK, I would like to find some opportunities to do some in-person workshops at UK academic or research institutions. Just drop a line to me because it's quite easy for me to travel and get around and, and come and do things. That's the way I'd like to do them. And I think 
the impact is stronger and longer lasting when we do it that way. So really, that, that's my question. You know, what could I do for you or your institution or your group or your initiative if it's anything to do with documentation? That's something that you can come to me with. I'd be really interested to know what I can do for anybody or with anybody to collaborate or find out where our ideas match or even run counter to each other. <laughs>